Welcome back to Hope and Heals. Noops in the house. Tomorrow is our very first Bible study. It's on shame, thief of intimacy. Our Hope and Heals journal also includes a special chapter, chapter four, on shame. We hope you'll join us. Hi there, Jay Soul signing in. Today's topic is the fruit of lies, and I'm going to share about accusation and condemnation. The evil one comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he does that by accusing me and condemning me. The evil one knows all the ways I sin every day. So do I, which makes it so easy for me to accept the accusations and condemnation. I forget that as a daughter of the Most High, I am forgiven, and even in the middle of my sin, he can and will rescue me, God, because he loves me. He values me. He knows me and my heart and how much I want to live by the Spirit and not in the flesh. God is the lover of my soul. He does not accuse or condemn me. He loves me and gives me grace. I reject fruit of lies that say I'm guilty or that I'm blamed and that I'm punished. Hey guys, it's your girl, Just the Mess with Hope and Heels. And this week we're gonna be chatting over the fruit of lies. I have two different kinds of fruits today. Which one would you choose from? The lie that the enemy tries to feed me is the lie of forgetting who I am in Christ. The fruit of the lies the enemy tries to feed me are with these words right here. You're not worthy. Who do you think you are? Who said you could do that? Why are you doing that? Just stay home and do nothing. Whenever the enemy tries to feed me with all that junk, I have to remember that that junk and lies are not good for me or my health. I have to remember to pray, to shut the enemy up and tell the lies to be gone. I have to remember and remind myself that I am chosen. God reminds me on a daily that I'm chosen. I tell the enemy, you can't steal from me. You can't destroy me. The battle is God's and it's already been won. Hi, it's Debbie Deb here. And today we're going to be talking about the fruit of lies. I always know that the enemy is at work when he tries to get me to agree with my negative thoughts. Here are some ways that the enemy makes you agree with the lies in your thinking. He makes you believe that you're indecisive, self-doubt, you lack confidence, you don't manage your expectations, you lack ambition, motivation, you fail to appreciate small things, you're your worst critic to yourself, you're hard on yourself, you overanalyze, overthinking every situation, especially a decision when you make with your mind or with your heart. You assume the bad things or you predict something bad will happen. You doubt yourself, unwillingly to do something or anything because you are afraid you will fail. How do you overcome these thoughts? Remember, you are a warrior created by God. You were given a sound mind. When the story repeats in your mind, remember God never leaves you. Rebuke the thoughts. Don't blame yourself. Don't believe in the lies. This becomes a form of rejection. It's hard, I know, especially when there is a story repeating in your mind. The enemy creates lies based on facts. He will twist the story and create a different one. This is a form, again, of rejection. However, remember God is always with you and never leaves you. Rebuke your thoughts in Jesus' name and renew your mind. Hi there, loops in the house. We have two pieces of fruit. We have an apple, it looks delicious, yummy and whole. And we have an apple, it looks not so whole and not so delicious. So when the enemy comes, he brings you a lie. He brings you the fruit of lies is what the Bible says 
in Hosea 10, 13, that we eat the fruit of lies, thinking that it is good for us because it's half truth, looks good, and half lie, which is makes it all a lie, right? So we're gonna be introducing to you a topic called fruit of lies. And one of the ways that the enemy comes to attack you and get into your heart with a lie saying that you're all alone, that you're separated from God, that God is far away and that you are nowhere near to God and that he has never been near to you. That's a lie. When he cultivates a sense of separation to love. One of the biggest lies of the enemy is to cultivate a sense of separation to love. God is love. So if he gets you to separate yourself, to see yourself, to feel yourself away from God, away from love, how lonely is that? He's got you in his lie. Most of the problems you and I face come down to battles surrounding the love of God. If everyone was completely immersed in the Father's love, we'd see a whole lot less of these problems. That's because God's love is a game changer. When you experience that depth of the Father's love, the connection wired to that love is so strong that nothing can stand against it. That is why there is so much assault over you experiencing the depth of God's love for you. The enemy hopes that at first you'll feel separated from God's love, driving you to live a life of performance-based living. What can I do better? Well, how can I be better? Can I get more? Can I do more? Can I have more? No, no, no. We can't be seeking for God's love there. It's not there. He is love. Your adversary will also distort what looks like love so that you'll stumble through relationships and find yourself locked into habits and coping mechanisms that provide no life. In the end, he seeks to slowly erode the ability for your heart to receive the life of the Father shown through Christ Jesus. And we know that Jesus is the life. He's the way, the truth, and the life. So let's live it. Let's smash that lie that God is far. No, no, no. We say God is here, God is near, and God is with me. He's never left me.